Okay, good day to all students of not only of Pablo S. Villaferte High School, but also to all students of grade 10. So again, this is your science 10 teacher, Sir Eduardo D. Malie Jr. And this is the, the hard copy that I had provided to you. So you have to put your name here, your section, your grade level, and then the date. So let us go back to the PowerPoint. So for our introductory concept, you, you learn in grade 9 that many genes in plants and animals behave differently than the genes that Mendel studied in peace. Where traits are not entirely controlled by dominant and recessive genes. You also learned how the genes in your dioxyribonucleic acid or the DNA influence your characteristics. Now you will work on activities to assess your understanding on the structure of the DNA. Explain how DNA replication takes place how ribonucleic acid or RNA is made using the information from DNA, how information in some genes is translated into proteins, and explain how mutations may cause changes in the structure and function of a protein. The central dogma of the transfer of genetic information is outlined in these learning activity sheets. Okay, for our most essential learning competency, explain how proteins is or explain how protein is made using information from DNA. And for our objectives, at the end of this learning activity sheet, you should be able to, number one, identify the role of DNA and RNA in protein synthesis. Number two, describe DNA replication. Number three, relate DNA replication to its complementary structure. Number four, describe transcription and translation. Okay, for this pretest, we have to answer this now. Okay, what is the process called when DNA makes an exact copy of itself? Or DNA makes another DNA 100% equal or the same with the original DNA. Okay, the correct answer is replication. Number two, what is the process called when the information in DNA is, is rewritten to mRNA? Okay, the correct answer is transcription. For number three, what is the process called when the information carried by RNA is decoded into amino acids? The correct answer is letter C, translation. So remember these three terms for you to better understand about the this topic or this learning activity. Okay, for number four, what would be the complementary strand of DNA look like for the one below? So this one, you will be the one to give answer, the answer. So as we go with the learning activity sheets or with this activity, you can understand what will be the correct answer here and for the number five. Okay. Let us now proceed to this activity, getting to know the DNA and then the RNA structure. Now, directions, study the figure below of the DNA and RNA, then fill up the comparison table below or in this part, this one. Answer the guide questions that follow. These are the guide questions. Okay. In this table, you are going to choose the answer in the DNA. Is it single-stranded or double-stranded? And check it in this figure. Okay. In the DNA, is it single-stranded or double-stranded as you can see? What about the, the RNA? Okay, number two, location in the cell. Based on your previous lesson in grade 9, where is the location of the DNA? And then where is the location of RNA? You have to choose nucleus and cytoplasm. And then number three, the types of sugar. The dioxoribose or ribose. Or based on the name, what is the name of the DNA? Dioxoribonucleic acid. And then RNA, ribonucleic acid. So from the name itself of the DNA and RNA, you can get the correct answer in number three. Okay, number four. Nitrogenous, nitrogenous base pair. Okay, these are the nitrogenous base pair of the DNA. And these are the nitrogenous base pair of RNA. So, in this part, for number four, you have to put four answers in the DNA and four answers in RNA. Okay, in our guide questions, what are the components of DNA and RNA molecules? Number two, what is the structural difference between DNA and RNA? Number three, what nitrogenous base is found in RNA but not in DNA? Or what are the nitrogenous base here that you cannot found in DNA? So good luck in answering this activity one. Okay, let us now proceed. For activity two, DNA makes DNA. So let us watch f first this video about DNA replication. DNA is a molecule made up of two strands twisted around each other in a double helix shape. Each strand is made up of a sequence of four chemical bases, represented by the letters A, C, G, and T. The two strands are complementary. 
This means that wherever there's a T in one strand, there will be an A in the opposite strand. And wherever there's a C, there will be a G in the other strand. Each strand has a 5' prime end and a 3' prime end. The two strands run in opposite directions. This determines how each strand of DNA is replicated. The first step in DNA replication is to separate the two strands. This unzipping is done by an enzyme called helicase and results in the formation of a replication fork. The separated strands each provide a template for creating a new strand of DNA. An enzyme called primase starts the process. This enzyme makes a small piece of RNA called a primer. This marks the starting point for the construction of the new strand of DNA. An enzyme called DNA polymerase binds to the primer and will make the new strand of DNA. DNA polymerase can only add DNA bases in one direction, from the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end. One of the new strands of DNA, the leading strand, is made continuously, the DNA polymerase adding bases one by one in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The other strand, the lagging strand, cannot be made in this continuous way because it runs in the opposite direction. The DNA polymerase can therefore only make this strand in a series of small chunks called Okazaki fragments. Each fragment is started with an RNA primer. DNA polymerase then adds a short row of DNA bases in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The next primer is then added further down the lagging strand. Another Okazaki fragment is then made, and the process is repeated again. Once the new DNA has been made, the enzyme exonuclease removes all the RNA primers from both strands of DNA. Another DNA polymerase enzyme then fills in the gaps that are left behind with DNA. Finally, the enzyme DNA ligase seals up the fragments of DNA in both strands to form a continuous double strand. DNA replication is described as semi-conservative because each DNA molecule is made up of one old, conserved strand of DNA and one new one. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Okay, for our activity, uh, study the steps of DNA replication. We already watched the video. Okay, you have to put the answers here, arrange from 1 to 5. So, I'm going to give you a bonus answer. Okay, this one, two strands of DNA split. This is the step number 2. So, based on the video and then in this uh, figure, you, you can answer the correct arrangement. Okay, guide question. Describe DNA replication. Number 2, when a DNA molecule unzips to form two strands, what is added to each strand? What is produced? And then number three, compare the two new strands of DNA. Are they the same or different? If your answer is the same, why? If your answer is different, why? Okay, good luck for this activity number two. Okay, for number three, what's the code? So before we proceed to this activity, let us watch again this video about transcription and translation. Science and transcription and translation in simple terms. Here's a general overview. A portion of DNA is used as a template to make RNA, technically messenger RNA. And this phase is called transcription. Then the messenger RNA will travel to a ribosome where translation will occur and the amino acids will be put together in the correct order in order to create the protein. So let's take a look at transcription. Transcription begins when RNA polymerase begins to unzip a portion of DNA. As it unzips, the four bases of RNA begin to make a strand of messenger RNA. The messenger RNA will detach from the DNA and travel outside of the nucleus. Notice that the four bases are the same as DNA for RNA, except thymine is replaced with uracil. Next up, we have translation. 
Translation occurs at the ribosome and is an important stage of protein synthesis. Messenger RNA that has traveled from the nucleus arrives at a ribosome. Ribosomes are found in the cytoplasm and in some cells at the ER. Ribosomes are protein-making machines and are made up of rRNA and proteins. Ribosomes consist of two major components, the small subunit, which reads the RNA, and the large subunit, which joins amino acids to form a polypeptide chain. At the ribosome, the messenger RNA is read three units at a time. This triplet is called a codon. A transfer RNA has an anticodon, which matches with the codon and has an amino acid attached. As a new transfer RNA moves to the mRNA, the amino acids bond together with a peptide bond, and a string of amino acids begins to form called a polypeptide chain. This process will continue until a stop codon is read. In this example, the stop codon is UGA. A transfer RNA has an anticodon attached and an amino acid. The anticodon is a unit made up of three nucleotides that correspond to the three bases of the codon on the mRNA. Each amino acid attaches to a particular codon. You can use an amino acid chart to see which codon matches with each amino acid. After the stop code is reached, the string of amino acids may begin to fold into a functional protein. So there we go, translation and protein synthesis. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Okay, let us now answer this one. You have to arrange one to three in this transcription. So I'm going to give a bonus one. Okay, this part is number two. Where is number one and number three? So based on the video in this in the diagram, okay. For trans for translation, you have to answer four, five, six in this three. The number four is the number four is the number five and where is the number six. So I'm going to give you a bonus answer. Okay, this is number four. This is the continuation of the number three here. So this is the number four as translation begins. Okay, guide question. Describe transcription and translation using the figure above. Okay, this is the figure. This one. Okay, analysis, as you can see here, study and analyze the steps of DNA replication. Okay, as you can see on the figure, the nucleo bases guanine always pair up with cytosine. So, and thiamine always pair up with adenine. So, this is the pairing. G complement to C or C complements to G. And A complements to T and T complements to A. It is impossible to complement the A to G or to C and complement the G to T or to A or to C. Always GC, CG, or AT, TA. Just remember of that concept. This is in the DNA replication. Always G compare uh, pair to C, and C pair to G, and A pair to T, and T pair to A. Always re remember that. Okay, now it's your turn. Now, based on that previous rule here, you may now answer this. I had already given you an answer here in number 1. C, of course, complement to G. A, complement to T. So what will be the complementary of here? C. What about G? What about A, C? So put your answers here. The same also in number 2. We have G, T, A, G. Uh, G, T, A, C, A, G. So what will be the complementary here? Write your answers here. Here. Okay, in this right portion. And also in number 3. Th that is very easy. Now are you ready to trace the code? Uh, let us try answering this one. Directions. Fill in the complementary DNA triplet using DNA based pairing rule. This is the pairing rule. Transcribe the bottom the bottom DNA strand number one. This one, the number one. And fill in the them the mRNA codon number two. Use the codon chart and write the three letter abbreviated amino acid. So this amino acid will be based in this number two. But you may also use the tRNA for the number three and the correct tRNA anti codon for number three. So let us try answering this part. Let us start here. ATG. So based on the base pairing rule, we have A is always paired with T. So AT. And T is paired with A. And G paired with C. So what will be the complementary here? If T 
T now in the, from the DNA, T corresponds to A. Let us check. You correct. A and A corresponds now to U. If that is from DNA to mRNA. And C, G. The only difference here is that A uh, complements now to U, not to T. If that is DNA to mRNA. So, let us check now to AUG. This is now the correct answer, AUG. Based on the genetic codon chart here, where is the AUG? So, let us find here. This is the AUG. So, the amino acid arrangement is MET. Okay, the tRNA is UAC. And let us try this one. GTA. So, G corresponds to C, T, A, and A, T. And to mRNA, C to G, A to U, and T to A. We have now the G, C to T, A, and A, T. And C, G, A, U, T, A. And then G, C, U, A, and A, U. So, this mRNA, G, U, A, corresponds to the amino acids of, where is G, U, A? Here's the G, U, A, Val. So, V, E, L. Uh, have a closer look, this one. So, for the next one, from this portion, we have 3, 4, 5. You will be the one to give the correct answer based on the base pairing rule and based on this genetic codon chart. So, good luck in answering all of this. Okay, let us now proceed to the abstraction. Based on the activity, answer the following questions. How does the information from the DNA pass on from one cell to another? So, we've already discussed about the replication, transcription, translation. Okay, number two. How does the structure of a DNA molecule help account for the great variety of life that exists on Earth? Number three. Explain how the structure of DNA enables the molecule to be easily transcribed. Why is this important for genetic information? Number four. How does a mRNA molecule carry information from DNA? And number five, what is codon? What does it represent? Okay, remember, protein synthesis is the process where a sequence of DNA is used to build protein from individual amino acids. The first step in this process is called transcription, where a coding region of DNA is converted to messenger RNA or the mRNA. And then during transcription, the mRNA is made from the DNA sequence following the base pair rule. Except, RNA does not contain the base thiamine, but instead has a uracil or the U. The mRNA then leaves the nucleus and goes to a ribosome in the cell cytoplasm. The ribosome reads the message three bases at a time called a codon. Each codon will specify a single amino acid. The amino acids are joined together and folded into a protein, a process called translation. Okay, let us now proceed to this application. The DNA cracking the code. Okay, this one. Using the decoder below, find out what color of the hair of each of these boys will have according to their hair color game. Note, use the DNA base pair in transcribing mRNA. And then use the genetic code table. This is the genetic code table. Okay, we are going to start here from the DNA. We have AATG, TCA, ACT, CAT, CTC, TAA. And then this also for number two, number three. So DNA base pair, what is the DNA base pair based on our previous activities up to this one. So the amino acid that will be formed here, the basis is this table. What will be the possible color? Okay, good luck in this application. The DNA cracking the code. What will be the color of the hair of this boy, this one, this and this one. Okay, thank you for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed answering all the activities here in our learning activity sheets. Again, this is Sir Eduardo D. Malio Jr. Thank you for watching.